Climate change is an increasingly urgent threat multiplier, exacerbating inequalities, spurring conflict, political instability, and increasing displacement. Women bear the brunt of climate change and its impact on physical health, livelihoods, food insecurity, and gender-based violence. United Nations agencies, the World Economic Forum, the Interparliamentary Union, and civil society have all urgently called for gender-responsive action to the climate crisis. We cannot avert climate-induced catastrophe or meet climate goals without women. In fact, women have been at the forefront of climate change since Eunice Newton Foote was the first scientist to discover the link between increased CO2 in the atmosphere and planetary warming way back in 1856. Indigenous women continue to brave the front lines of protest against fossil fuel extraction. Young women and girls lead by example and have galvanized millions around the world through Fridays for Futures school strikes, community groups and activism to draw attention to the rapidly worsening climate crisis. Women are on the front lines of climate solutions too, inventing and sharing new technologies, deploying indigenous and regenerative agricultural practices, building zero waste and circular economy business models, managing renewable energy and water and forest conservation actions as entrepreneurs and women's groups. As Melinda Gates says, women are not just victims of a broken world. They can be architects of a better one. This is why we need gender responsive climate action. There's a global framework already in place. At COP25 of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, held in 2019, parties agreed on a five-year enhanced Lima work program on gender and its Gender Action Plan. It aims to enhance women's leadership in climate negotiations and to mainstream gender equality in climate policies and actions. The latest research shows more women in positions of power correlates with more attention to sustainability and climate issues. But in both national delegations and the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change Bodies, women are still significantly underrepresented in decision-making. So what more can parliamentarians do? First, advocate, support implementation of the Lima Gender Action Plan and call on your country to integrate gender equality into national climate policies. Second, educate, support intersectional climate education for both schools and your parliamentary colleagues. Third, promote, call for women's full, equal and meaningful participation in climate leadership at all levels. And finally, act, be a role model by starting or joining a parliamentary working group to promote gender-responsive climate action and green COVID-19 response. <laughs>